There's a lighthouse on a hillside that overlooks life's sea. And when I am tossed about, it sends out a light that I might see. Okay, well, let's get started. Uh, I'm Mike McDonald, and we are in the Bible study. Uh, we're in 1 Corinthians chapter 2. We got through verse 8 last week. Uh, and we will pick up at verse 9 and see how far we get. This is going to be... Uh, I've been anxious to get to these few verses, so I, I'm excited about it. Uh, but remember, before we get started, uh, if you're a believer that Jesus Christ is your Savior... Uh, then your responsibility right now is to silently confess all known sin since your last confession to God the Father. Uh, as a believer, the Holy Spirit has indwelt you permanently, and with unconfessed sin in your life, you have uh, taken back control of your spiritual learning. Uh, with our... With un uh, if you've confessed all known sin uh, to the Father, then the Holy Spirit is in control of your learning spiritual information. Uh, and, uh, and He will help you understand the Scripture. If you're not a believer that Jesus Christ is your Savior, then confession of sin is totally irrelevant. The only thing relevant to you in reference to God is to believe that Jesus is is your Savior. So let's go to the Father now and do that. Gracious Heavenly Father, we come before you today thankful for your provisions for us, thankful for your Word, and thankful for your provision to help us understand your Word. We ask that you uh, help us do that today. Let's Help me get it correct and help us apply what we learn to our lives when we leave here that we may better represent you. We ask these things in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Okay. Uh, I've given to you before, but uh, there's, a, there's a real significant promise in Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 55, verse 11. Uh, and Isaiah is speaking for the Lord. He's talking, Isaiah is talking to his audience. And he says, speaking for God, uh, who would be uh, the second person of the Trinity, so shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. It shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish what I please, and it shall prosper in the thing for which I sent it. So, this is only true, however, if you properly understand the Word. God gives the information out. There are many, many applications of that information, but there's only one uh, correct translation of it, and so we're always working towards that. Uh, and we are in 1 Corinthians now. Paul is writing back to the Corinthians, trying to straighten out some of the problems they've been having, and mainly the problem is pride, and they are separating themselves up into different little groups uh, and uh, going after the speaker rather than what the speaker is saying. And he is, uh, uh, let's uh, turn to Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 2. And we will start out in verse 9. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. But as it is written... Oh, well, let me, let me start out uh, before in verse 7. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the ages for our glory which none of the rulers of this age knew. For had they known, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. 
Then he goes on, but as it is written, I have not seen nor ear heard nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. And we had that, uh, it has been written earlier uh, in chapter 1, verse 19. Uh, and as I mentioned then, the words get corruptite, and um, it's a perfect passive indicative, meaning completed action in the past with results that follow and that's that's just the tense but the word itself introduces in scripture introduces a unalterable agreement so what follows that statement in scripture is something that God is going to see to it that does not ever change and what he says is things which the eye has not seen and the ear has not heard. So, Paul's point is that there is no way for a nor a, the natural man, uh, the natural man, natural uh, just means the, the person who's been born and not uh, saved. The natural man has nothing available to him, no way to understand Scripture. Uh, as he said, as he, it, nothing uh, is available to him in the natural world to understand God. Uh, that has to be revealed by God. So, um, nothing offers him. The only, the only uh, person that can understand God is the believer, and he can only stand, or we can only understand that part of God that He reveals to us. Uh, so, um, and He will do that in the order in which we're capable of receiving it. So, the ones loving Him, uh, I didn't get that far, did I? Okay. Things which eye has not seen, nor ear had, have not heard, and which have not entered the heart of man, all that God has prepared for those who love Him. So uh, when he gets to the final statement there, those who love him, uh, the word there is agape, uh, and it's uh, the the word agape is uh, it does mean love. Uh, phileo, philo means love. Uh, eros means love. All of those are different Greek words for love. Agape only originates with God. Okay, so what that means is that all humanity has to some degree experienced God's agape love toward them. However, believers are the only one that can express agape love, and we can express agape love only through the working of the Holy Spirit in us, uh, because it originates with God. It is a, a, just that uh, a special. So when he when he adds into that, and this is. This is Isaiah talking. Uh, when he adds into that, uh, the ones loving him, you know he's just talking about believers. Uh, all humanity experiences some degree of God's love. Okay. Those that worship God must do so in spirit. Okay. God is a spirit, and you cannot worship God except through your spirit. Uh, and as I've mentioned before, as soon as we are born, God breathes the breath of life into us. That life is human life, physical life, a soul life, and spiritual life. As soon as you're born. Okay? And then that life goes into a sin-contaminated infant, and the spirit automatically separates from God. I mean, you still have a human spirit. Uh, scripture refers to that as dead. A dead human spirit. And the word death just means separation from something. It always means separation from something. Most of the time it's separation of your soul from your physical body. Here we're talking about separation of your, of your human spirit from God. God actually just pulls away uh, and will not communicate with that person. All right? So the unbeliever has no way of worshiping God. 
John 4, 24 says that God must be worshipped in spirit uh, because He is a spirit. Uh, Alright, so the blessing of salvation were prepared by the Father, carried out by the Son, and applied by the Spirit. Uh, Ephesians chapter 1, verses 3 through 14. Um, there's, in every translation that I have, um, the, that section of Scripture uh, is using pronouns to be very confusing. Uh, but you read through it and it, it, would, it would take another lesson for me to go through that. But it, we're talking about you receiving a reborn human spirit and uh, that's the way God will communicate with you. All believers, uh, let's see, okay, so John, uh, 1 John uh, chapter 4, verse 19 uh, it explains that the, the, the blessings of salvation, this is God's plan, God the Father's plan, uh, He planned it, He prepared it. The Son, the second person of the Trinity, came and uh, carried it out so that it would be effective to anybody and the Spirit, uh, Holy Spirit, is the one that reveals it to us. So Paul has used this, he's telling these people, I've used the simplest form of speech that I know to get this information across to you. But when it came to, so when he's talking to unbelievers, he's talking the Gospel. And the Gospel is Christ crucified. The man and what he did, Christ crucified. But when it comes to opening up the truth to God's people, to the believers, then that's a whole different thing. There are deep things, there are wonderful deep things in Scripture that are not open to unbelievers. It's just, there's no way for them to understand it. And we have to understand it in order, in the correct order. Uh, that's why, you know, you can read the same Scripture over and over, and after, after a while, all of a sudden it'll mean something to you. It's because you have gotten ready for that. Uh, because there's just an unbelievable amount of stuff to learn. Nobody ever learns it all. Uh, so, and, and that should not be hard to understand. It should not be hard to accept. Because uh, there are hidden wisdoms of God, uh, just like there are hidden wisdoms of us. You know, uh, our schools have uh, advanced degrees in all kinds of things. Uh, advanced degrees in technology, advanced degrees in mathematics, advanced degrees in physics. Uh, that, but most of us, uh, if we heard any of that stuff, it just go over our head. And, and if you're like me, you're not interested in any of it. So you're not going to uh, develop the time uh, to learn that. Well, same thing true with theology for us since Isaiah wrote that. Well, God has revealed Himself in the person of Jesus Christ on earth for 33 years. The Gospels have been written. The Epistles have been written. The letters have been written. They're all there for us. And we have the Holy Spirit in us to help us understand it. So, as a matter of fact, we are supposed to understand it. Romans chapter 15 I'll read it. Romans chapter 15, verse 4. For whatever things were written before were written for our learning, that we, through the patience and comfort of the Scriptures, might have hope. Everything that's been written for us we it is for our learning. Of course, we can't do it until we unless we apply ourselves to it. And then you can turn to Second Timothy, uh, chapter uh, chapter three, verses sixteen and seventeen. And it's that verse that y'all probably already, all of you already know. All Scripture is God breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God might be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. So, it was written for us to learn, and 
we, we should be studying it and learning it. So, there are new revelations, and it is for our understanding. Verse 10. My yeah. question or comment, I think it's very interesting uh, in Scripture for God blinded people from understanding. In fact, I guess probably Moses and Pharaoh is an example, and I can't think of others or that God prevented them from prevented some uh, group of people or people from understanding uh -huh. before it was revealed to them. Yeah. Uh, so he was God was controlling the mind. Yeah, it was controlling the what they were able to understand. And that thought, that has been questioned, you know. Because the, the awesomeness of him. Yeah. God, what God can do. Yeah, he's a he made all of the, the laws of physics so he can, they don't apply to him, they apply to us. Yeah. So, uh, well, yeah. Well, and I think, of, I think the other thing too, and I know God has used evil people or not saved people, I probably shouldn't say evil, but he, you know, how God used Pharaoh. Yeah. And he controlled Pharaoh. Yeah, we just had a verse that said uh, that these people that crucified the Lord would not have done that if they had known who he really was, well, God used those people, unbelievers, uh, to progress his plan. Uh, Christ had to be crucified. He had to die so he could uh, spiritually die for our sins and physically die because this is a, this is a uh, uh, prototype for us that this is what's going to happen to us. We're going to physically die and we're going to be resurrected. So what you just said about the Pharaoh, somewhere I heard that God calls Pharaoh to harden his heart. God caused him to harden his heart and not release the people. Right. And I'm like, that, that doesn't make sense. Why would God do that? But I always tell people, God wastes nothing. So he can take a bad situation and turn it into a good one. And he does that for a reason, but still it boggles my mind to think that he would harden somebody's heart in a way that he's, he's asking them to do something and they're not doing it, and yet he himself is hardening their heart. But there's a reason for it that I don't understand. But Well, it's, it's not a difficult reason, and it's probably just never been introduced to you. Uh, Pharaoh hardened his heart to begin with, okay? God was going to make a point. He was going to make a point of this nation that was going to follow that nation no matter wherever they went. All of, when they went into the Promised Land, all of the nations that were there knew what had happened in Egypt. So Pharaoh hardened his heart and God performed a miracle. Pharaoh hardened his heart and God performed a miracle. Well, that was enough to convince him. But God wasn't through. If, if He had let them go at that point, it wouldn't have made the same yeah, effect that God wanted it to make. And so He just kept them there for that tenth uh, miracle. And then everybody knew. As a matter of fact, there were a lot of Egyptians that left with uh, Israel because they had decided that th this, this God of Israel is a real thing. You know, mm -hmm. Because He... He, I never knew that. He, he, he had all of the other gods that all of Egypt was, was worshiping and all of their statues. They were all face down in the dirt when Israel left. Uh, so all of those gods were obviously inferior because they were wood. Uh, but anyway, uh, that, that's the reason uh, he hardened Pharaoh's heart because the point hadn't been made yet. There's more than one example of that in Scripture uh, that he does that. Okay, verse 10. For to us, God revealed through the Spirit, for the Spirit searches all things, even the depths of God. Now, uh, this is one of those verses that will cause you to scratch your head because of the pronoun. Okay, so God has revealed these things uh, of His, His great mystery to believers. Uh, all these come things come from God 
Thus, no personal pride is to be uh, exhibited here at all. Okay? okay? Uh, everything that we're talking about, uh, what this amounts to is that, uh, remember, the reason he's writing this letter, the reason he's writing this, is because these people have separated themselves up into groups in uh, the church, and the people were were looking up to and and praising uh, the people who were talking to them. Okay, because they knew some Bible doctrine, they were they knew some information that the people didn't know. So they were looking up to these people, and these people were developing pride. So what what God is saying is, for to us God has revealed them. That's the secret things. Through his spirit. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. put my wife on here. She revealed is uh, one of those words that you probably already know. Oh. And I'll write it up here. We're at a Bible study. I'll pay for Luke's. Gary is filming Paypalupsis. So, that's oh, it's the end. I don't think any of us know what you mean. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you're <laughs> you're saying that anything is great. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, I pay to <laughs> yeah, That's probably true. Uh, but some of the people watching may know, so yeah. I'll try to get it right. Um, <laughs> I'll put it up correctly when I. <laughs> Thank you. He, he'll find it. He'll find it. Okay, so we get our word, uh, the name of the last book of the Bible from here. Okay? Uh, Revelation. It, it's actually Apocalypsis. Uh, and what it, we use that word to designate a disaster or something terrible has happened. It's, it's just an apocalypse, right? Uh, well, apocalypse doesn't mean disaster. Uh, and it's used without that meaning. What it means is an unveiling, an uncovering. Okay? And, and we use that because in, it, in reference to, it's, it's in reference to Jesus coming back as the God-man uh, and He is being revealed to all of humanity at this point. Okay, he was here before as the God Man uh, for 33 years, but the deity of him was covered. It was not revealed at all. Nobody uh, knew that until they learned it while he was talking to them, uh, and that was a pretty limited number of people that did that. But when he comes back, there's nobody's not going to know it, and everybody's going to see him coming back at the same time. And it's not going to be on a TV screen. I don't know how he's going to do it, but he says that everyone will see him. All right? And he is going to be revealed. And what's going to be revealed is his deity. He's no longer going to be the suffering servant. He's no longer going to be covering the deity that he had. He's going to come back. And he's going to come back. And the reason we have the idea of a tragedy or a disaster is because that's what it's going to be like for the vast majority of humanity when he comes back. At that point, every nation on earth is going to be at war. They're, they're going to be at war with one another. All right? They're going to be trying to take over and, and uh, because the devil's in charge and he's lost control uh, and they're going to be at war so everybody's going to be armed and they're all going to be fighting each other, and then he's going to appear in the sky. And then they all have a common enemy at that point. So everybody's going to be against the Lord when coming back. And we're going to be with him, as a matter of fact, but we're just going to be watching. Um, and he's going to destroy all of them with, the, with words, with just talking to them. Uh, and so it, there's going to be millions of people die. Uh, over a very short period of time and he's going to take over the, 
the entire world and he's going to do it by force. Uh, so that's what apocalypse means. That it's an unveiling and it's an unveiling of Jesus Christ and his deity. So for to us, God has revealed, he's using this same word, reveal secrets to us that have been kept from us because we are not ready for them. So, uh, let's see where I am. Christ said, oh, we got to follow. Okay, and this is being revealed by whole theos, um, God the Father. Uh, he is the one that is, is doing the unveiling of the information in Scripture for us. All right? That that information has been carried out by Christ and it is being revealed to us through the Holy Spirit who is in us. But it's God the Father who's doing it. For the Spirit, this is the one that's confusing. For the Spirit searches all things, even the depths of God. Okay? Depths is uh, bathe, and it's the normal word for depth. And what, what this is actually saying is that the Holy Spirit is searching the depths of God the Father for us. Alright? Uh, no, and if you're reading commentaries, uh, don't let them trick you into thinking that the Holy Spirit who has permanently indwelt you uh, is searching out the things of God the Father because He doesn't know what they are. <laughs> hey, that, that's not what's happening. He's searching out the things of God the Father. He already knows what they are. What He is figuring out is how far along are you? How far along am I? What can He reveal to you now of the things of God the Father? So Paul is talking about how and why God's things are revealed to us. How they're conveyed to us. And they are conveyed to us by the Holy Spirit and He does that in steps. Okay? And we have, we have other scripture for that. Uh, let's turn to the Gospel of John, chapter 16. Because this, uh, uh, y'all may have already know this, but the, a lot of the people that I talk to, uh, they don't believe it when I tell them this. Okay, John chapter 16, and let's start out with verse 12. Paul is talking... Uh, uh, Jesus is talking uh, to the disciples and He says, I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. I mean, He tells them right up front, you're, you're not spiritually mature enough to understand what I need to tell you. And He's right? telling that to the disciples. He, yeah, he's, John, uh, this is after, after Jesus has uh, uh, been crucified and has been resurrected and He's back with them. And he says, there's a lot of things that, that I need to tell you, uh, but you're not ready for them yet. But I'm sending somebody. Okay? So, and then he, he goes on. So Paul's talking about that. He's talking, this is, this is still the way God works. Uh, and then he says, uh, uh, I'm going to leave. And But, however, when He, the Spirit of truth, has come, he, as the Holy Spirit's coming, he will guide you into all truth, for he will not speak of his own or on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak, and he will tell you things to come. He will glorify me, for he will take of what is mine and declare it to you. How am I going to do this? How am I going to bring these people along? Because precept must be upon precept. Precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little, there a little. He's telling them, you learn Scripture one doctrine at a time, and you learn it one line at a time, and you can't jump ahead. So he's going. To, he's saying, I'm going to be, I'm going to be starting out with nobody alive that knows any Scripture. I'm going to have to start back from scratch because this is the way it's learned. Well, it's still learned that way. Uh, and if we expose ourselves to it and if we develop, devote time to it and if we 
keep short accounts. Remember what I, I said about keeping short accounts? Uh, don't ever go a day without stopping and silently confessing to God the Father the sins that you've committed since your last confession. Because as soon as you commit a sin, it's paid for, all sins paid for, but it's not forgiven. And as it not being forgiven, the Holy Spirit is no longer in control of the growth of your spiritual maturity. I just wanted to point out that that is an excellent verse in John there that speaks of the Holy Spirit yeah. as a person. Yeah. So because he says, I have much more to say to you, more than you can now bear. But he, the Spirit of truth, comes. He will guide you into all truth. He will not speak on his own. He's He's telling you that the Holy Spirit is coming as a person. Yeah. A real live person. And he, he's coming. He, he's going to come. He didn't tell them then or right then, but He's going to personally indwell each and every one of us. Every believer since Pentecost. He, he, he couldn't come. He couldn't come until Christ was seated at the right hand of the Father in glory. As soon as that happened, the Holy Spirit came, Pentecost occurred, and from that point on, every time a person believes that Jesus is the Christ, the Holy Spirit permanently indwells him. So that is the spirit form, I mean the human form of the Holy Spirit within each believer? Or well, is it just one, one there's, human? There's, there's no human form of the Holy Spirit. Okay. He, he is a spirit and he is indwelt. Oh, I thought you could just say he it, well, he's talking about a person. He is a person, but he's a personal deity. Uh, he's not a he's not a human at all. Uh, never does he become human. Uh, only the second person of the Trinity. He just is dwells with us in, in us. this human yeah. body. Yeah, because you are now you're now a target. Jesus but, is, Jesus is seated at the right hand of the Father. Did Everybody has the Holy Spirit in them, whether they're good or bad. No, no, I didn't say that. Although the way you put it, that's correct. Uh, everybody who is a believer has the Holy Spirit in them, whether they're good or bad. Mm -hmm. uh, you have you have the same amount of the Holy Spirit in you, whether you're good or bad. You, so you are have permanently to indwelled. Open your heart up to receive. Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior, and that's when the Holy Spirit. Um, well, I don't like the I don't like the phraseology uh, of a, a lot of people use of inviting Jesus into your heart. Uh, that comes from uh, I stand at the door and knock. He, that's a that's a fellowship thing. That's Jesus talking about coming in fellowship with believers it has nothing to do with salvation. Opening your heart up, that has nothing to do with salvation. All you have to do is believe the information. You don't have enough information to love Jesus. You, you haven't, you, you're unable to understand enough information to love God or love Jesus before you are saved. Uh, only then can you start to learn God and, and then you can learn to love Him. But all you have to do is look at the sky and you know there's a God and you are a sinner and you're unacceptable to Him but He's provided you a way and that's the way. As soon as you believe that, you have a human spirit that is now capable of communicating with God the Father and you have the Holy Spirit in you as a seal, a guarantee, just like you put up earnest money when you buy a house uh, you don't get the house right away until it's fully paid until you've got the money to pay somebody, but you put up earnest money to reserve that for you. Well, the Holy Spirit, it, Scripture refers to Him as our earnest money, our seal, that this is what you are going to get um, as soon as uh, the time comes for you to get that. But anyway, yeah, um, it is the Holy Spirit that is in us permanently that allows us uh, to learn any information. 
right. Uh, have we got time for another verse? Oh, yeah. All right, verse 11. For who among men knows the thoughts of a man except the spirit of the man which is in him? Even so, the thoughts of God no one knows except the spirit of God. That's just as straightforward as you can get. Paul illustrated the extent of his searching and examining. I didn't go over that word, did I? Uh, searching and examining. Uh, that uh, That's actually the word there uh, that we have. The spirit of the man. Uh, search, erauna. Um, it means to search diligently or examine completely. Uh, it's... Uh, Around, E R A N U N A, uh, and it means to uh, uh, search or examine, and that's what he's searching uh, all things to determine uh, all things in the depths of God to determine what He can tell us, uh, and that's uh, that's where that comes from. So, uh, who among us knows the thoughts of a man? Knows is the verb that we've had before, oide. Uh, and it uh, it means to know a fact, uh, any kind of a fact. It can, and it's a, a perfect action, indic uh, active indicative. So it's completed action. He already knows this stuff, uh, and he's searching to find out uh, what he can tell to us. Uh, and here we're talking about men knowing men. So who knows among men the thoughts of a man? Uh, and I can tell you what I'm thinking and you'll know. You can tell me what you're thinking and I'll know. But I won't know what you're thinking until you tell me. All right? Well, the same thing is true with God. Um, the Spirit of, the, of God searches, um, searches God and tells us uh, what we're ready to hear. So, and he's, he's applying it just to us. The Spirit of the man relates to that which dwells in every person. Uh, Proverbs 20 verse 27 here we are told that God reads the human spirit as if it was a lamp in a dark place so it's it's phrased that way because if you're in a dark place and all, somebody all of a sudden turns a lamp on then everything's clear to you right well he reads us just like that there's not anything about us that he doesn't know even so, the thoughts of God no one knows except the Spirit of God. So, knows is our verb, konosko, and it's, it means taking in knowledge, learning something. Uh, and he, we do that as it is revealed to us. Yeah. It is in the perfect tense, so it indicates action completed with results that, that continue. No one has this knowledge. Uh, no one has taken in this knowledge except and then you have uh, if not uh, and it's translated except you can tell me your thoughts and i can tell you mine we went through that so just as a as human wisdom needs the human spirit to comprehend it uh, we say that you you have a dead human spirit uh, until until you are born again spiritually but your, your spirit is just dead to God. Uh, I mean, your human spirit is working all the time uh, because that's the way you understand things. Uh, but uh, uh, it is separated from God, so it needs to be uh, reborn just like our bodies are going to be. Our body, we cannot go into the presence of God right now. Uh, we can't see God right now. If we, if we did that, we'd die immediately. But when we are in a resurrection body, which is going to happen to this body, then we're going to be able to be in the presence of God. Well, the same thing's true with the spirit, our human spirit. Uh, it cannot... Uh, uh, our human spirit attaches... Sin attaches to our human spirit and our soul. Okay? Uh, and God cannot put up with that. Uh, so we are said to be separated spiritually. But when we are born again and we have a regenerated human spirit, sin never attaches to that at all, ever. 
but our soul still needs to be saved and our body still needs to be saved. And that's why salvation is past, present, and, and future in Scripture. So just as human wisdom needs the human spirit to comprehend it, <laughs> somebody's waving a clock at me. I must have gone loud. Okay. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, just as our human spirit needs, uh, uh, human wisdom needs human spirit to comprehend it. Spiritual truths about God can be known only through the ministry of the Holy Spirit. And we will complete verse 11 next time. Any, anybody got any questions? Being once saved, always saved. We all have probably known people who have become evil. And I'm using the strongest word evil, not just sinners, because we're all sinners. Yeah. I don't think we're all evil. Is that a true acceptable statement? Yes. But yet it, the mystery of me, and I don't even need to be thinking about it, is those people are still going to be in heaven if they're once saved, always saved, and then they turn evil on earth. It's just part of the mysteries of, of the whole spiritual realm to me. Yeah. Yeah, it is a, it is a question. Um, the only way I've ever been able to uh, approach that is... Um, just consider how evil God must think we are to refuse His offer of salvation. So refusing what He has offered us is more evil to God than anything we can personally wow. do. Okay, I, I just Wait, thought God thinks again? we're stupid. <laughs> refusing God's offer of salvation. He offers salvation oh, to every human. Yes, okay. okay? Uh, every human has, can just look up around them and see that there is a God. Uh, and if you want to know more about Him, then He's going to tell you more about Him. He tells you in Scripture. If we seek Him, anybody that seeks Him is going to find Him. Uh, so, he has, he, has offered, he has offered to you salvation and you have rejected it. Uh, there's not anything you can do, uh, in God's opinion, that is more evil than that. That is what puts you in hell, not your sins. Sins don't put you in hell. Uh, your sins are all paid for. Uh, until you become a believer, there are not any of them forgiven, but they're all paid for. I mean, you have been bought off of the slave market. Uh, you just don't want to leave it yet. Uh, but refusing His offer... Uh, to make you acceptable to Him is more uh, unpleasant to Him than anything else we can do. And Christians, believers, are capable of any sin you can think of. And Christians have... So your question was, if a person is evil, but they were a believer at some point, they are already saved but they still continue evil deeds, but they believe in God. No, they believe in Christ. Okay. They will still be saved? Yes. It's the theory and then, of once saved, always saved. Yes, right. And you can't fall out of salvation. For you, to, for you to question that uh, tells me that you think the way you live has something to do with whether or not you're saved. No, I kind of don't, but there's just some stuff that's so horrible. Things that are so horrible, it makes me cry. Yeah. The things that people do. People are that evil. I can't imagine the, the Lord would take someone like that and bring them to a place where it's supposed to be. But I do know that things will be revealed. And if you were evil here, once you you know what's going on, you will repent immediately of ever. I, I kind of, that's the only way I can accept that because I can't imagine, you know, because I always, this is what I kind of tell people. 
God cannot bring evil into heaven because look what happened when he had Satan up there, who was his angel. Then they'll start another, another. He had, everybody has to be good because he can't have evil in, in heaven. Otherwise, they might just try and, and then start all over again. I don't know, that's, that's the best way I can explain about why people need to kind of change their ways and be as their best possible. Because I, I do believe that it's possible to do all good things through Christ because he made that possibility in, in everybody. It's, everybody has a, a, the ability to be their best self. They just are in this world and they don't realize it. They think they can't. My son, who's on drugs, keeps going, I can't. Well, I was on drugs once, and I used to say the same thing, but it was really that I didn't want to. I didn't want to give up my drugs. So now when I finally decided, let me see if I can, and I started slowly, I did. And now I realize I could have all along. It's like Dorothy and the Wizard of Oz. Um, you had it in you all along, you know? You just didn't realize you had it. And so I can't open my son's mind enough to tell him, yes, you can. You convince yourself that you can't when you say you can. But I think somewhere deep inside, you know you can. So people in the world, I feel like everybody has the same opportunity to be their best self. They just don't try. They don't think they can. Or they're having too much fun being bad. I don't know, but I just can't imagine them going to heaven. I can't. Somewhere well, in heaven. I, I have a completely different outlook on humanity than you just expressed. Oh. What uh, is your... My outlook on humanity is that we are all evil. Yeah. And there is nothing about us in any shape or form that's good. And even if it was good, God rejects good. He rejects both good and evil. The only thing He accepts is absolute righteousness. Uh, that's the only thing he accepts. Uh, that's why when you believe what he tells you that he's, is true, he credits you with his righteousness. You can't get it any other way. Uh, all humans are evil. And the only good that ever approaches us is as a result of Bible doctrine in us or in our atmosphere, uh, in our nation. And our nation is quickly turning so away from God. do you think God can God. forgive Satan and bring him back into heaven? No. 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 Why is that? He's already judged him. Uh, Satan has been judged and sentenced. Uh -huh. And he has rejected all of it. Uh, but, yeah, it's... Uh, what The way you live your life after salvation determines uh, your degree of... Uh, Privilege in heaven. Rewards. Okay. Rewards. Rewards. Uh, that will That's determine. what the difference is. Your rewards are going to be different in heaven. Yeah. Okay. So, so this evil person's going to maybe with a whole bunch of other evil persons. He's <laughs> not going to be with you because your rewards are going to be You're, greater. I believe okay. if you do evil things, whatever it might be, there are consequences on earth. Yeah. That's another thing that you need to remember. As a believer, you are an adopted child. Uh, and God will treat you as an adopted child. He will treat you as His child. You will be uh, receive uh, punishment on earth. And the Bible is full of that. Uh, it's full of, of uh, believers being reprimanded. The nation Israel is a complete example of that. Over and over and over again there... They, have, they were reprimanded to the point of being dissolved. Uh, they completely carried off by other nations. Uh, but they are uh, prophesied that they are going to be a nation on earth uh, when Christ returns. And so they, they still are going to uh, regroup and be a nation on earth. In fact, they, they may be a part of that now. Uh, that's, they're not what uh, God predicts that uh, they will be when He returns because they are, they are 
gathered together as a nation under Zionism, uh, what he predicts is they're going to be believers uh, in the Lord Jesus Christ as a nation uh, when he comes back. But anyway, uh, that's... Uh, that's getting into a lot of stuff that... Uh, I'm still trying to wrap my head around it all. <laughs> yeah. Well, the plan of salvation is so simple. And yet, all of the spiritual things that once we become a Christian that we need to be exposed to this book and teaching and preaching and all of those things, we are supposed to mature in our spirituality and that is the task that's this yeah i mean yeah I'm, like like i say i mean becoming a believer is is simple the gospel is simple <laughs> absolutely the most simplest thing in the world uh, learning doctrine learning scripture is hard applying it to your life is harder yeah uh, because you've got to, you've got to work at it, at learning it, and you've got to work at applying it to your life. Now that's where our faith has to come in. And if we don't have faith, I well, just got to have faith. <laughs> yeah. Anything else? Gracious Father, thank you for today. Thank you for this group gathered together to study your word. Father, help us understand it and help us make application that we may represent you honorably. We ask these things in Christ's name. Amen. Amen.